those kids back there. <laughs> but I love them, and I love you for being here. Uh, I do not have a sermon for you, more of a motivational speech. I'm not much of a sermon type of girl, unless I'm a power preach. More of a music kind of person, that's how I connect with God. So I wrote this down, and I want to tell you, I don't have a title for it, but it'll flow. You'll get it. If this is your first time, we are a very interactive church. Feel free to clap, feel free to laugh, feel free to cry, feel free to stand up, uh, and enjoy the show. <laughs> I love you, Cassie. This group that I brought, Black and Beyond, started with a thought. It's always, in the, it's always been in the back of my mind to start a BSU, which is a Black Student Union, but on a smaller scale and at an elementary level. And sometimes things happen, like scaring myself that I would fail. I didn't know how to go about it, and I didn't know if I was really up for it. But it stayed with me for a very long time, and so I continued to pray about it. One night I was praying, and God cut me off in the middle of my prayer and said, write it down. I said, but I'm going to pray about it. He said, and I said, write it down. And I said, well, prayer should be enough. And I said, write it down. After going back and forth with God, I felt like he had left the room because he was done with me. And I felt good. I felt like I had won that argument with him. And so I continued to pray, thinking that it would just happen. I quickly learned that while prayer works all the time, sometimes God wants you to put in the work and not just pray for things to happen. But even still, I ignored his request to write it down. It wasn't actually a request. It was, it was a demand. <laughs> One day, I was on yard duty. I work at Lipsmer Elementary, and I noticed two young students, African American, busting apples and oranges, taking them, biting them, flying them around, taking the seeds out, keeping some in their hands, putting some in their pocket. I was prepared to yell at them because they were wasting food. So I stopped and just watched to see what they were doing. And what they were doing was they had a, we have a dirt hill and they took a branch and they went on the dirt hill with those seeds and they began to plant those seeds in the dirt. After being curious, I went up to them and asked them, what are you guys doing? With excitement beaming from their face, they said, we're gonna do some plant trees, we're gonna do some plant trees, we're gonna take some home and build them and put them in our houses so we can have some fruit trees. After a few questions in, I knew then that God had put the vision on my path. Now, weeks earlier, I had formed a step team, and after I discovered what the kinders were doing that day, I met with the group to practice. Before practice, I asked if they wanted the seeds from the apples and oranges that the kinders had to plant in their home. I told them to plant, not in their home, but to just plant. I told them they, they were excited and was like, yes, Jumping up and down, yeah, we're going to plant blueberries, strawberries, oranges, lettuce, we're going to have salad parties, all the things. The excitement went on for a quick 30 seconds before one of the students said, but wait, it's not seen. Where are we going to be? Where is the garden going to be? I said, at your house, duh. She looked at me so cold and with a straight face said, Miss Cassie, how do you expect us to have a garden in our house? Don't you know where we live? We live in a project. She says, first of all, with, with everything, the neck, the hand, the foot forward. She said, first of all, <laughs> there ain't no dirt to grow anywhere, to, the, to grow anything where we live. We live in a project. And second, even if we did have the dirt, how are we supposed to take care of the garden when there's a dead body laying on top of it? 10 seconds of silence. Other kids started chiming in. One girl said, yeah. And we have to be in before dark because these fools be shooting up the block. Ain't no way we can have a garden where we live, at least not one we can enjoy. Waiting for an answer, I didn't have one to give them. Complete shock on their face and complete disappointment on their face. We spent the next, we spent the next 45 minutes practicing trying to lift each other up while telling stories, trauma bonding, really, over what we've all witnessed in the streets while growing up in the Bayview. 
even in that moment, I heard God say, write it down. His words were so strong, they were so powerful, they were so overwhelming, almost suffocating. I could tell he was getting irritated with me because I knew he was trying to use me in that way, but I was just too scared and I've never felt so scared. I didn't know what to say, I didn't know how to say it, I didn't want to say the wrong thing, and I didn't want to make empty promises. That week our school closed down due to the pandemic, and it would be more than a year before we saw each other again. But I remember going home that night, and I got a piece of paper, and I was like, you know what? Whatever, God. I'm just going to do it your way. I got the piece of paper, and I wrote, help me, God. Show me what to do. I began to write everything that I had imagined for Black and Beyond. I come to realize that God was right again, and I needed to put in the work. I began to write everything I saw for the group, still questioning how am I going to make it work? Like, how am I going to pull this off? In the middle of my thoughts, I get a notification, Pinterest. The notification said, check out these school gardens, fun ways for kids to get involved. And before, <laughs> and before my excitement kicked in, for a split second, I thought, was that God or was that Google? <laughs> I immediately clicked on the link and the floodgates opened. My thoughts were wild. I started adding things to my vision board, left and right. I think I even called in the next day just so I could like, do everything that I wanted to do for this Black and Beyond party. And I didn't even have a name. It wasn't even Black and Beyond. It was just a group. Um, the next morning, I had texted the principal of the school and I said, I asked, hey, when we get back to school, can I build this garden for our black students? He responded, yes, absolutely. And I knew he was going to say yes, and I was glad, I was relieved that I could do it, but still, like, how am I going to start it? How am I going to fund it? So, I wrote down, with what money, God? I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw someone doing a birthday fundraiser, and there was my answer. I wrote it down, and created a fundraiser, and within three days, we raised $5,000, which was the to return back to school, preparing for the kids' return. I began to build my vision of the garden. Lots of bowl trips, lots of Home Depot trips, learning how to stand, stain, mix concrete, fencing, and all this stuff. With the help of our principal and Jesse, we were able to build a wonderful garden on the top yard of our school where the kids were beyond ecstatic. That was the day Black and Beyond was formed. Black and Beyond, thank you. because we are forever black and forever and always will be black. And we reach beyond the stereotypes and limitations put on us by society. Our garden is open for everybody, but I wanted to build a safe, a safe place for our black and brown students, a place where they can let go of their worries and take a breath, a place to put their hands in the dirt and connect with the soil and the earth and God, a place where we can grow our own food and be able to break bread together in community. This is our fourth year, and we are growing stronger every day. We are hosting a potluck this Sunday, and we just had our fourth farmer's market this past Friday. And on top of stepping and growing things, we're connecting in the most powerful ways, um, learning life skills, getting, getting a little bit of tough love, um, thanks to me and their teachers who are here today. This all started with a vision. If you take anything away from what I say today, is that you have to write it down. God will give you the vision, but you also have to do the work. You have to partner with God for things to start moving and taking effect. In the Bible, and I do not read the Bible, but I know it says, six days, God created heaven and earth and the sea and rested on the seventh day. Now, I didn't know why God created for six days and then rested, but I believe that he said he would do nothing else on earth without our participation. Now, if I was God, don't say that, uh -oh, I heard you. If I was God, knowing that half the people on this earth take their sweet time getting anything done. I'll be like, they tripping. Right? I tell them to do something, they
they don't do it. I tell them to believe, they don't. <laughs> so why in the world am I asking them, and I'm all powerful? But God says, it makes more sense to get the glory if I use something that doesn't have the ability to make happen. He said, I use foolish things to confound the wise and show a testimony through my life, my life, Classy's life, Vernon's life, Anne's life, Papa Cecil's life, all of our lives. He said, I'm going to use them because I'll do nothing on earth without one of my children. God wants us to partner with him. So take it from imagination and bring it to a vision and begin to do the work. Even if that means picking yourself up every time society knocks you flat on your own. Mm. You just have to trust God and believe in the plan because the vision is always clear. But the problem is, I'm tell y'all what y'all problem is. <laughs> Some of y'all don't have a vision. And I'm speaking for myself too. And the Bible says, God said, write it down. That's all he said. Write it down in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. The vision in that message from the Bible points to what is coming. So when we have the vision, we believe something is coming. What is coming is me being healthy. What is coming is me controlling my anger. What is coming is me working on my family. What is coming is working on my marriage. What is coming is working on being in a marriage. Shout out to me and the single people. What is coming, what is coming is, is being sober. What is coming is me beating cancer. What is coming is this church being stronger than it ever has been. Vision, vision gives imagination permission to exist on the earth. When we write it down, it can go wherever you allow it to go, as long as you have God. Now, the funny thing is, and y'all love a lot, I think, <laughs> I remember while I was on Pinterest that night, when God uh, wrote the stuff down. At some point, I got another notification about the 911, you know, the TV show with Angela Bassett, airing that night. And I clicked on it, and there was a teaser of Angela Bassett, uh, and this, this kind of like bikini stuff. Right? Body banging. Banging. Six pack, thighs, everything, right? And so I like to play games with God sometimes. He always wins, but I like the challenge. I got a picture of my face. I cut it out and I put it on her body. Because <laughs> it was a body that I thought I needed. Because I wanted to be healthy. I said to God, I wrote it down. I said, since you want me to write everything down, show me what you got down, God. I started doing the work. Two weeks later, after being, after eating boxes of Ho-Ho's and Twinkies. <laughs> but once I started doing the work, he said, I'm gonna show you what I can do. He took 25 pounds from here, 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 and here. And he gave me that my health. And the ability to walk up six steps without losing my breath and thinking about going to pass out. I didn't have a six pack, but I for sure became healthy. All right. The crazy thing is, when, you, when we're afraid to write down our vision, it's so simple to do, yet it's so hard, and many of us struggle to do it. We're afraid that if we write it down, and if it doesn't happen, that somehow God is not good, or you don't hear God, or even you don't believe in the God, and you start to surround yourself with people who you think have to talk about God and protect God's reputation in order for you to believe again. People have literally surrounded themselves with me, trying to trying to tell me to convince them that God is who he says he is. That is not my job. And I don't have to convince anybody of who God is. We know who God is. He is, his name speaks for himself. He has proven to be a force all by himself. The man had no servant. Listen to me. No servants, but they called him master. He had no degree, but they called him a teacher. He had no medicine, but they called him a healer. He had no army, yet king feared him. He won no military battles, but he conquered the world. He committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He, thank you. He was buried in a tomb, yet he lives today. Listen, God was here before you, and he will be here after you. 
neither you or me need to protect his reputation. So let's take that off our backs. Some of us are scared to apply for a job because we may not have all the qualifications. Some of us are scared to go to the doctor because we might get an unexpected diagnosis. Some of us are scared that we will lose our job because we got laid off. But God is a prankster. Did you know that? He pranks me all the time, and he's good at it. Just when we feel like we've hit rock bottom and we can't go anymore, God is always like, ha, gotcha. You thought you were going to be homeless. Look at you in your two-bedroom house. You thought you were going to be relaxing. Look at you uh, pressing through on your AA and NAB dance. You thought your cancer was going to take you out. Look at you going to your treatments and getting all healed. Lamont, you've been patient. You've been a servant. You've waited eight years. And God said, here, take this kidney. with other people, believe in the plan, and put 